This is Eric from HowToRecordMusic.com. Today, I just want to show you uh, really quickly on how to save uh, channel strip settings inside of Logic Pro X. Um, you'll find this super useful when you want to um, quickly load up a patch or, um, let's say, uh, a channel strip that uh, maybe houses your, um, or that, that has an input uh, for your, um, let's say, bass guitar or your, uh, you know, or really any instrument. Uh, uh, analog or digital, and, um, you know, without dialing in the presets every single time or dialing in the certain sound that you're after. So maybe your bass constantly, you know, has this certain tone and you like to keep all these settings applied to it. That's a good example. Um, another example is how I use my tutorial voice uh, channel strip here. So basically this track, uh, the only track that's on Logic right now, uh, it has a compressor and it has an EQ. And when I do these screencasts, I basically use these same settings, uh, or I try to, and one of the beauties of that is I can just save this channel strip and all those settings remain. Um, there are a few setbacks, and I'll show you what those are in just a second. Um, not everything saves the way you'd like. Um, there's other ways to import the <clears throat> this uh, a channel strip or an instrument's uh, sound or tone. Uh, through the file browser by clicking over here and you basically go through the project, find another project, uh, and then drag in that instrument. Now, I'll give a video on that uh, later on, um, but let's stick to the channel strip settings. So I've already done it for this one, so the tutorial voice. If I want to call, bring up this patch again, I can just easily just go to audio and I can really not select anything here. I can just do no input. And it's going to go ahead and override that anyway. So when I go to the setting in the mixer window, I hold down setting. And as you can see, I already have a list of them uh, already there. But if I was to grab another tutorial voice, I'm just going to go ahead and click that. And that builds the second tutorial voice. Uh, oh, it looks like I didn't save it with the, uh, comp uh, the EQ on it. But you get the example. I pulled up uh, a compressor with the settings already set to what they are on the other track. Really helpful. Um, I didn't have to configure the compressor. Uh, I just basically pull it up and, and start laying down some ideas. Now this also works. You know, works for audio. It also works for um, for uh, uh, virtual instruments as well. So let's go ahead and create a. Um, you know, what, we're going to create. A, I already have a stylus. Let's just create an empty channel strip, as you can see there. Uh, I already have an empty. I mean, a, a, a stylus RMX patch that I've worked on, and I want to bring that into this session. So let's just do that. So I'm going to go ahead and click Software Instrument, uh, Empty Channel Strip, and go ahead and hit Create. And now if I play on my keyboard, my MIDI keyboard, you don't hear anything because there's no instrument applied to this. So the input value or the value of the MIDI is coming through, but there is no uh, nothing to attach that those, those notes to. <clears throat> so to do that, you know, I've already, like I said, I already have one saved, uh, but you could be working on your sounds and then you'd like to save these and use them again. So all you have to do is just go up to the settings up at the top of the channel strip and save, uh, save channel strip setting as, and then you basically would go through and name it. Now, as you can see, I've already have one, I already have one for Omnisphere and I have one for uh, Stylus. Let's go ahead and just pull up the Stylus one. So we do the same thing. We just go back down to the menu, Sty Eric Stylus. That's going to pull that up. Now, the cool thing about this is um, I didn't add any other audio effects to this uh, to this uh, plugin, and uh, I didn't configure any other output. But that stuff should be saved. The downside is the sends don't save. So if I was to add a bus and then save it again, bust this out somewhere, it doesn't actually send, and I'm not sure why. It's just part of the way it is. The other thing that you'll notice, though, is that I have a multi-instrument uh, track set up here, which I can go ahead, and I didn't have to sp specify that in the plugin or anything. I, s I did that beforehand, and I saved it as a channel strip setting, and I was able to recall those settings quite quickly. Now, the downside of that is that if I, let's say, had a, a whole rack of plugins up here um, for this stylus RMX patch in this instrument, those, when I, when I go to recall that uh, channel strip, these do not stay as well. So the, the sends and the plugins do not stay. The, they stay on the main window. They don't stay on the uh, multi-output. I'm not sure if that's a bug or what it is. But 
Anyway, so let's go ahead and play our Stylus RMX, the, the track I've already mixed. Now, let me pull up the mixer window and show you that all my settings are saved, okay? Um, and that's because, well, first of all, I created a, a custom beat, and I named it, and I, and I saved that. But also because the recall feature in the channel strip pulled that up with everything I had. So let's go ahead and play this. All right. Just going to start adding some of these elements in. Okay, so you may have noticed, but in the mixer window, it, it was already routed. Everything, all the audio, so I'm going, uh, the first one goes to output A, which is the first one here. Output B goes to here. Output C, output D. You get it. So, um, so that's pretty much it. So now if I made some tweaks in here, of course, I'm going to also want to save that in, in stylus. But the other thing I'm going to want to do is go back and save my uh, channel strip setting so I can, if, if I'm comfortable with that, and all you have to do is just override it. So let's just go to save channel strip setting as, and just go ahead and just override that. So there you go. So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how you uh, can kind of reuse, and it's a workflow tip, and it, and it definitely saves time. I didn't want to set up, if I was to go through and set up Stylus RMX, create a new patch, and bust it out or route it out into multi, uh, different tracks here to control that. Uh, it's pretty tedious. So um, there you go, guys. Hopefully this is a helpful tip. Uh, maybe you knew it already. Maybe you didn't. If there's something I missed, please leave some feedback and let me know uh, how to do it better. Uh, it's all about learning and growing and, and being the best uh, you know, music producers we can be. So um, hopefully you're, you're, you're following along with some of these and uh, uh, yeah, um, thanks for watching.